Hi and welcome back to A Life Story Foundation. I am Shana Swan and today amidst all of the hurricane um, emergency preparedness that we are doing, I want to take a split second to give you some tips on how to be prepared when you go out with an ALS patient. Go out, out of the house, or date, either way. Our first thing and our most important thing is our emergency bag. We um, always have this with us, so whether we're going to a park down um, on a three hour trip or just down the road to get gas, I always like to have this and it really has just about one of everything in it. Uh, we'll go through the contents of it. So this is our emergency bag. Um, one of the first things I always learn that if you need something to, to move and it doesn't move, you should have a knife or sharp pair of scissors on you at all times. So that's always something that's in the bag. Um, if something does move and you don't want it to, you should have some kind of tape. Um, I always have duct tape, medical tape, and that will cure two of your biggest problems. Something that moves that shouldn't and something that doesn't move that should. So look at the scissors. One thing Kevin always has is gauze. Um, not only for two by twos that go around his button that we discussed in the previous video, if you didn't get a chance to check that out, but he also keeps pants, pants gauze, they're called. They're actually split pants that go up and you'll see them cover this part of his trach. So it just doesn't open wound open um, for everybody to look at. So he always needs two pairs. And since there is a lot of leakage involved in both, we always keep plenty in the bag so that we can change those out if we're doing something he needs pictures at or wants to look extra fancy. Imagine that. Here is the front pocket. Ooh, what's in the bag? We got some syringes, uh, one dry. This actually is used for Kevin's button, uh, or for, I'm sorry, for his trach. Uh, we put in air. Actually, it's used for his button too, so either way. Um, we do a lot of going in and out of air conditioning makes Kevin's cuff and his trach swell in and out. So it repositions itself and it gives him a really weird choking feeling that he likens to having a hair caught in the back of your neck. So um, sometimes it just takes a little bit more air um, to compress against all of his neck so he doesn't feel that kind of choky feeling. So we'll just take, put it, put a little bit of air, fluff it up. So we always have a dry one of this. Same if you need to do the button change that I mentioned pulling out before. You'll need to draw the rest of the liquid out of the balloon with the syringe and then flush it back in. So either an air or saline syringe can help. I do keep some with saline that are um, sterile because if Kevin were to um, have like a cough assist that wasn't bringing up a large chunk and we needed to squirt some saline in it, uh, if you need it, if you drop something and just wanted to rinse it off really quickly, this is something that comes in handy more often than not. If you can't find your dry syringe, squirt the rest of the water out of this one or the saline, squirt it out a couple times and it's dry enough that you can use it as a dry syringe too something they taught me in med school, so. Uh, the Mickey Bullis Feed Extension Set is a part of um, Kevin's tube, the G-tube feeding, that in case we forget one at home, we always keep a spare one, that way we get to the bar, we can still have a drink and not be mad at Shayna. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and leave these things out we've already talked about. Here are the pans I was talking about earlier. I'll just slide right up there like that or like this pants since they're out of the rack or I'll throw those away they come in two packs so sometimes when you open one ooh, here's the fun stuff in this pocket we always travel with a backup um, inner cannula or cannoli as I like to say it's fine um, this actually is the middle part of Kevin's trick so it's like the disposable lining of his trach. So like I said, if he does a lot of cough assist and needs to change this out, he has a little piece caught in it or we're staying overnight somewhere and don't have an extra one, um, this is a great thing. This, this piece at the end is actually what the trach hooks onto itself. So every morning we remove this 
um, change it out, put a new one in, and, it, and until you get this back in, you really can't connect him to anything to breathe again. So it's very important, very, very, very important. We also like to bring along a size six and a size eight trach. God forbid we ever need these, but in an instance that Kevin gets his neck ripped out or a kid pulls on it funny, probably my kid, <laughs> um, and it pops out the trach, we have one try with his original size um, is what we have all the equipment for and what is in there now. And then it, they said, if I don't feel like I can get it back in correctly, it would be much easier to try with a size six slightly smaller version. Uh, you don't have to line it up in the correct place as easily. Again, plenty of medical training on that one. So we got a spare tray and a size smaller just in case. Okay, in the big compartment. We always keep a made up um, circuit, we call it. The circuit connects Kevin's machine to his throat, so anything in between that is what comprises the circuit. Uh, they send these to us in several different pieces, and just based on how we've customized it to fit Kevin's neck, we put together a whole one, so it has the elbow, it has the um, flexi bender that will connect to him, um, it has the air filter already on, and this has happened a couple times. So this is something that I so highly recommend to have made up at places you frequent, at places um, that are handy. Uh, we keep one in my mother-in-law's bathroom, we keep one in our bathroom, we keep one in the bag, we keep one in the closet, because if the hose were to ever rip in an emergency situation, which has only been like four or five times, <laughs> um, you can grab this right away, hook it up to the machine, and hook it up to Kevin. Um, you'll probably have to use the Ambu bag in between, depending on how fast you can access these. So it's good to have them, have them ripped open and ready to go and already put together. So we can just grab this out. And since I mentioned it, we'll talk a little bit about my least favorite, my least favorite thing in the world. The Ambu bag. <laughs> so I only see this one in extreme duress. Uh, this is when Kevin is not on the vent, we can't get him to take breath, or something on the machine is malfunctioning. We're resetting one of the machines. Uh, we hook him up to this, and this is actually breathes for him. So, uh, <laughs> the first time I used it, uh, one of the nurses in the hospital was training me on how to use it. Say so the second time I used it, I won't even tell you about the first time. It's, that's a whole different video, right? Right, Julie? <laughs> Okay, so this, um, it actually, when it's put together, it flips in and in. So if you see one and it's flipped inside of itself, it looks a little bit different, like on this end. You just pull them apart, and then this becomes the airbag. And see, I'm glad I checked this, because I can tell just from the Florida heat and having it in the car, like how warped the plastic is. So we should be getting a new one of these. Uh, again, we have several at least three of them. Um, one that we keep at Kevin's mom's, uh, one that we keep here, one, one that we keep in our bag at all times. So we're never without it. Uh, so you just go ahead and do this. But anyways, when the guy was training me on it, he said, just breathe like you would breathe, <laughs> which probably isn't the best um, technique because usually when I'm using this, I'm breathing like this. <laughs> it's okay, Kev, it's okay. <laughs> So go ahead and just do nice slow breaths. Um, it hooks right up to his trach on this one instead of using the face mask. So while you're getting this prepared and this attached to the machine, this is what will actually be breathing in and out. I'm so always have this on you. I, I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress that enough. Ambu bag. Okay, I'll leave that up too. Um, and then we keep a large dry bag uh, that just has some other odds and ends in it. And it is literally probably a piece of anything that Kevin uses throughout the day. I try to have in here, whether it's either a backup 
suction canister because if the filter gets wet, they don't work and he definitely needs suction in the deck. Uh, air filters, we have suction tubing, extra coffee assist, extra connectors, extra. We keep a thing of dude showers if you are traveling or um, do the bathroom on the go. It's nice to have wipes. That's mom's little bath. And this is kind of his shower bag, I'll say, because we do a Ziploc that contains the backups for what he needs for the shower. His collar, his HME, his inner cannula, new sponges, new gauze. So he's fresh and dry. So we go ahead and put that out. Some two by two sponges. We always have plenty of gauze, plenty, plenty, plenty of gauze on hand. So again, thanks for joining us and getting some more tips and tricks about how to live with ALS. We look forward to seeing you again on Friday. Have a great week, everybody.